morning everyone so today we're going to talk about some combat reform tricks maybe some charge tactics um, little things so so i guess the premise would be i watch a lot of games on ub and it seems like you know a lot of people have the <clears throat> basic tactical understandings they know how to flee they know how to i don't know chaff shit you know they know oh i want to overrun into this thing back here i should i don't know hit my guy here so i you know stuff like that like basic shit um but i feel like there's a there's another line where if you truly know the rules you just get yourself a huge tactical advantage and that sounds weird to say oh if you know the rules and it it's really knowing some of the nuanced rules um that go into things like combat reforms or combo charging. Um, I would say combat reforms is probably one of the biggest things. And if we look at the rule, right, this page, I probably have the references page a ton when making rulings and it covers a lot of little tricks and stuff you can do or, or explains, you know, what is allowed and what's not allowed. And the thing is, while the rules aren't that it's one page really right it's about extrapolating that into tactics and, and preventing people from doing things so funnily enough i feel like another thing is not just taking advantage of the rules but taking advantage of the rules that people don't know and using their own positioning against themselves and we'll get into that but let's actually talk about this combat reform stuff and let's actually go over examples of what is allowed and what is not allowed because I feel like if you don't show somebody like what it's actually saying, like it gets very confusing. So let's just go from the top and, and we'll read this page. All right, each unit. All right, you can perform combat reforms, units on the side, you gotta pass this and check, it's easy. You can never do it if you multi-charge somebody from multiple sides. So this is actually a big deal. There's been times where maybe you're throwing in dogs into the flank of somebody and you know that the dogs are going to give up two wounds even though they're only like giving you maybe nothing in return just so that somebody can't combat reform all right and so the active player decides who reforms first this is huge i mean this is there are turns where who gets to reform first can like 100 percent change the flow of um, the situation on the battlefield and so that's why when you're charging you know one of the things to think about is what's going to happen in the combat reforms what can i do um knowing that i get to go first or i get to make him go first because usually reacting is better um you may not choose to combat reform of course all right so when you combat reform you place it you know you pick it up and you put it back which isn't that big a deal it, really, the reason they say that is because you can jump over your own units. Um, legal formation, following the unit spacing. So you can come within 0.5 units engaged in tank combat, but it cannot move into base contact with the means that it was not base contact with before the combat reform. So what you can do is, if you're within an inch of somebody, you can combat reform to stay within that inch. So, you know, going back to the map, it's it kind of makes sense, but... You know, uh, what's the best way to do this? Like, usually you couldn't, you know, if this was somehow fighting like this. Uh, let's get the spacings on, right? He's one inch away. Let's say you were somehow fighting like this. Because that's the best you could get with the charge, three in. You couldn't reform to be four. Right, but when you charge in, if the best you could do is hitting with three, and you start and you got to this position, you could, in your combat reform, go here because you started within an inch of that unit. So that's something to know. So sometimes there are uses when there's like an enemy unit somewhere, like close by, to actually get within an inch of them on the charge, so that when you combat reform, you can stay within that inch, and it gives you some more opportunity. So I guess maybe a bigger example would be. Um, Let's just see if I can set one up that makes sense. Let's say this, right? Well, that's going to happen anyway. You're naturally going to get within an inch. So let's say this charge, right? You charge and you go like this. 
you can't reform like this because you'll be within an inch of them. And let's say you had a, a charge from like here. So you could have chosen where to go. And I don't know, whatever reason you went like this. If you would have went like this, now you're within an inch of this unit. And now you have the option to reform wide and get in front of this unit if you want and go like here. So sometimes you should really think about like, is there a difference between this and this? Could be an overrun, could be something, you know, you wanted to overrun to a unit that was here. But really, you know, looking and see if you're within an inch of something is really a important detail, I think, because it really gives you options later on. So that's something to note with that unit spacing commentary. Um, that's that one. The unit must be placed to base contrast with all the units it was based on before. That's not too crazy. You know, if you're touching two units, you have to touch the same units. You have to be within your march range. Not that difficult either. All models in place with their center. Yeah. So this this is probably the line I have to reference the most. These. And we're going to explain what this actually says. Characters that were in base contact with enemy units would still be after the combat form. Boom. Characters cannot leave combat because of combat reform. Both enemy and friendly. Characters may end up in base contact with different enemy models than it was combat before. Okay. This is okay. This is actually probably the one that gets people the most. After each combat reform, at least as many models in the combat reforming unit must be in base contact with any models that they were before. So this is two, we'll get to this. This is two things. These don't have to be the same models, right? Of the combat reforming unit, right? That's the unit that's making the move. As many models as they were enemy models. All right. So it doesn't say as, but then goes here to say. Furthermore, after a player has completed all combat reforms, all enemy models that are in base contact with opposing models before must be still in contact, but they may be engaged with different models. So, to let's let's go through this and explain what this means, right? So, all right. So what are the conditions? The combat reforming unit must have as many models. They don't have to be the same. And then at the end of all the combat reforms, the same enemy models have to be in contact. So a, a good example that comes up a lot is chariots, right? Or single models in general. Oh my gosh, let's roll a die to unfreeze this. Okay, right? Let's just say somehow this could clip or like here, right? You can't go like this. Right, you just can't do it because you 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 cover the condition of as many as your models, which is the one. What you don't cover the condition of is the same enemy models that were in combat before are now still in combat. Right, the reason that they have this, they don't have to be the same models. Right here is so that you can put in characters into combat. That's the reason it's there. Because if you didn't have that clause, then people couldn't put in characters because your four models would have to say. So um, let me make a character real quick. Uh, oops. Nope. Maybe. Let's make a wizard. Right. So if I had a wizard in this unit and I somehow wanted him to fight, if I was reforming the warriors and I, I can put the wizard in, because I still have four of my units in combat. I still have the enemy unit in combat. And I didn't take the character out of combat. Now, the now what I couldn't do is take the wizard out of combat. Because the character has to stay in. But you can put characters in. And you have to keep the same enemy model in. Now, what you can do, some tricks, right? You can do, you know, if this was your setup uh let's say this so you're covering all the models this now reforms are one at a time so like space you still have to worry about space so you could do something like this goes here and then this goes here so now you or this is here so now you're still covering the six models right 
But let's take an example where this doesn't work. So what do we want to do? We want to keep this guy in contact with two, and we want to go here. Maybe we want to cover the wizard with the chariot. All right? But this is where you kind of have to think ahead, because if you went like this to start, like this, you couldn't do what I just did. Because if you look at this, he's covering part of the wizard. So this is the best he can get is here. You actually can't really do anything at all because here you're touching six models. There is no position, right? There's no position that this can move to that this can make up for the models you're going to miss, right? Because he, the chariot can't touch this corner guy because of this overlap. So if you were simply to do this corner, the difference between cornering the corner here and being slightly overlapped is the option to go all the way over here, right? So if, like I said, if, actually, no, I was wrong. You're still okay in this situation just because you can put him first and put it. Okay, so this is not the great situation because it, it can happen. I guess you could just take this away. Let's just take this away. Five by five because it does happen. Um, what can we do? Cover here. So what options do we have here? We could go corner to corner and then this could go here. If this was here, what could we do? Maybe with single models, it's not so bad. I know what is, oh, it does matter. That's right. Let's do this situation. There's a, there's a better situation. Sorry about that. Let's go this, this. Maybe. Let's see. If he's touching here, if he's touching here, yeah, this is a better situation. Let's say you have this. And for some reason, let's say this unit held, right? And you want to be in a different position for your next turn, maybe somebody charging you. If you had hit like this, there's nothing you can do with this unit. You can't bring him here. It doesn't do anything. If you had hit like clipped or even if you wanted to touch the mage still so you want to attack it, so you went corner to corner, go corner to corner and put this unit here. Because now what the options you have in, in this position, right, is you can do this. You can put him here. And you can either leave this unit how it is or just hit these four models, right? But you didn't have that option if you originally touched, like, um, this. And he was covering, right? There's a, like, I'm just trying to, you have to kind of see it, right? There's a big difference between this and this. This allows you to do the cool move of here to here. This, if you're covering doesn't allow you to do shit because you can't put this unit first because there's no space on the corner and you can't move this unit far enough over because he's covering it to co uncover this corner. So that's something to think about when you charge in because because those moves happen and can matter like a lot. Um, but yeah, that's what it means when it comes to taking units out and not. You cannot take this model. You can't take this guy out of combat with him. So you can't go over here. Even if you keep four in, the uh, the clause, this clause is for your your unit, right? At least as many of your units, right? And then it goes on to say at the end, the enemy models must be all the same enemy models. And that kind of covers the, the situation of moving units like, oh, you know, I'm like this, and the corner's open. I can cover this guy this corner guy with this guy. And now I kept the five guys in. It's just not in the same order as before. So that's a big one to know. And I think knowing that really helps um, tactics, things you can do. And so what happens a lot is, and I do this too, you know, when you charge something, whatever it is, you know, you're bound by certain restrictions with, like, whether you can hit. Like, he would have to hit here. And that's actually something you can not abuse, but something you can take advantage of. I mean, a lot of times it seems like people get caught out where they're like, oh, shit, you know, I, I don't know. I'll put a chariot mage back here, right? Or else put it here. 
if you're just if this is the situation, Chariot Mage is here, Feldrax are here. If this guy charges, he has to hit here and he can't overrun. Pretty simple, right? But maybe I don't know. Maybe you didn't see this unit over here, and you're like you didn't care about it. But now you come into the situation where if this charges, and this charges, now oh, this one's covered, it can hit here, and then it can hit your, your mage. That's a big one. Um, things I've seen a lot is um, maybe something like, like I've seen this before. Um, let's say this was like this, right? Um, Say so this is an enemy wizard right here. I know that's tough when I'm using the same models for both, right? And you're like, oh, you know, he can't see me, blah, blah, blah. But then you, shish happens like this charge is here. And you could flee and stuff, but we're going to assume you can flee. And this charge is here. And then if you break this unit, you can pursue this way. And this thing gets to pivot and charge this in the flank, right? So those are like the, these are like the moves that I guess when you see them, you don't go, holy shit, this was some crazy tactic I never even thought could happen. But it's something some people don't think about. And there's situations where, like, putting fast cav, like, things like flares and stuff, like, kind of sitting on the flanks and, and stuff like that can be really important. And obviously, you know, the way fast cav looks when it redirects somebody um, has a lot of implications, I think. Uh, some of the biggest ones being... Um, when you're in line formation or when you're in a stick, like a stick of fast cav. So I'll just use these guys, right? And I had it happen in my own game, right? So if you're blocking somebody with a stick, you know, which way you face can make a big difference because two things. Let's say they're like this and you're like this, right? If... If they just cuddle up behind you, there's nothing you can do unless you can get this unit out of the way, right? So maybe facing to the left is a better idea instead of facing the impassable because you want to have options to maybe charge this out this way and maybe there's a, you know, there's a mage here. And even though the mage can take you or this chariot, you can charge this, hit it like this, and then you clear the way here. Whereas if you face... This way, you have nothing, no options to charge. So you can almost get screwed because of people taking away your options. Um, another thing I saw that was was interesting, you know, is people using kind of chaff against themselves, where it's like, here's some DAW, here's a thing, and, you know, here's something back here. And let's say, I think it was like a hunter. Um, it was Thomas doing this. I think it was a hunter. And it was like kind of like this situation where this was like a Kadam, Kadam, and this was something else, Vassal Cav, and he wanted to shoot it, but he didn't want to get charged by it. And so he can take the fast Cav, so what he did is he would put his hunter like this, right? And so now the hunter can shoot this guy without any penalty, and he can't charge this because this unit's in the way, and if this unit charged him, it was too wide that he couldn't fit as well. So he almost used this guy's position against him because he's kind of like cornered him and he got a model within range that in the front that can't be touched. It can also happen like, uh, what else did I see? And I think these kind of things, like you can't plan for them so much. You have to kind of see them in the moment and take advantage of people making mistakes in their moves. Right, so let's say you have a big ass unit here, and you're just kind of like whatever. And let's just say I have elders for whatever reason, and I'm just like I'm going to put an elder here, and you know maybe I'm surrounding this unit. And let's say that I'm in sight, but let's say they have some type of character, some I don't know, just pretend there's something here, right? So in like this situation, as long as this chariot has nothing to charge. You can put yourself here in sight, and there's nothing he can do. He can't charge you. So you could even go as far as, like, here, right? Because as long as he can't wheel to you, he can't. So there's a big difference, like, here is, like, if you were to. He's almost chaffing himself. 
And you can take advantage of that sometimes um, by seeing different positions. So another thing people do weirdly that um, I think makes a huge deal, and it's something I check a ton is, let's say this situation, exactly like this, right? So enemy, I'm, I'm the chariot, right? And you have to just take... Take what the units are with a grain of salt because because obviously things will beat different things, but this is just an example. Let's say this is like a shitty infantry unit, and I'm this chariot, and this is this guy's fell drake, right? And it looks pretty simple. Well, if I come in here, boom, Elder Feldrake can see me. And, you know, if I don't break this unit, maybe I'll get popped. And maybe I'm just looking to pin this unit. But when I see this, what do I see? What's the big thing you see? There's a gap here, right? I can't hit here because I have to maximize and I'd still be seen. But I could hit here. And assuming I win the combat, I could reform. And all I have to do is touch four models that I was touching before. I, let's see if I position this right when I did the, the other. So if I can go like this. Now the other can't see me. No counter charge. Yeah, I gave him the flank, but maybe maybe it's shitty goblins and you think you can hold it. That's huge. I mean, just that little move right there. You would have to know... All you had to do was check the Elder line of sight. And people do this a lot, I think, more. Check the Elder line of sight. Say, I can go... I have to go here. And then I can turn this way when I win. Simple enough. But it's a trick. So what should the elder guy have done? He should have pivoted his elder so that that couldn't happen. That's that's the whole like there see that angle I just did? This was the difference. And these are the little things because you don't sometimes when people make just that little this. This to this is the difference between letting that chariot charge your unit with no counter in place. And then letting it be charged and countered, or not countered. Massive difference. Just a little, I mean, 15 degrees maybe? Maybe, not even? 8 degrees. But you have to be very deliberate, because you have to look at this and say, he has to go here, and this is the best position he can end up being in. So, that's an example of little things people can do. And I think these little things are where really good players outshine decent players. And it doesn't feel... I I feel like it's something that's hard to feel. Because when you're watching a game... I guess what the point is. Having someone take away your options... It, it, I don't know. It's a different feeling. Like, if somebody was to do this, this actually feels really bad. When someone charges you and, like, this happens and you can't see them. Especially if you didn't see it coming because maybe you relied on this uh, this counter. Um, yeah, that, that feels really bad. And it's little things like that which I don't think stick out to people as much because it's not dice related. It's not, I don't know, it's not as flashy but it's these things that can severely change a game. Um, another big one is if you think you're going to hold here. I've seen this a lot. Let's just. This unit's too wide. Let's do the chariots. Right? I've seen this one a lot where they're like this. Like the difference between this guy. So, you know, this is here and it's like, oh, you know, I'm going to come help myself. And he charges here. Right. This is good for this unit. Right? Because let's assume for shits, let's assume nothing dies. And if you're like if he hits here, right, this is the difference. He's in the front now. So if he only kills one model, this guy can't counter charge. Obviously if he charges to this side, um, you can counter because you're in the flank now. But 
he could also do something where he comes in, let's say he comes in on the smart side. And let's say you you fix this one. He can come in here. And let's say for whatever reason you fixed it and you're you're just tilted a little bit more so that you've said, "All right, you know, I'm in the flank no matter what, or at least if you're there." What if he kills one guy and then he goes like this? Right. Now in this particular situation, no, you can do anything because you're touching four guys, right? He just, you're still, now you're in the flank. He gave you his flank. There's no room to fit here. You could fit it on this corner, but you can't get to there. Those are the things. So what could you have done? You would have had to, basically what this is, is think ahead. You got to think, you know, people always think about, you know, there's, there's 10 things you can think about when this guy charges you. Where is he going to overrun? What's going to happen if I hold? What kind of combat reforms do I have? Where can he hit me? Where can he not hit me? Is there something that can come into the flank to make him pursue this way? And sometimes it's the seven or eighth thing that you're supposed to think about, which is what happens if he comes here and he reforms to give me his flank? And he just tucks in behind here. Planning combat reforms is huge. Because there's times where it's, you know, a big-ass single model. Right? And you're, I don't know, maybe you want to overrun into something here. For whatever reason, I don't know, you couldn't charge it before. And you say, oh, I want to go here to overrun here. Um, maybe, because here you can reform all the way down here. Oh, here's the, oh, sorry. There's another example. Yeah. Uh, people always look at overruns. That's pretty easy. I think people don't look at is um, combat reforms as much. So another big one would be uh, this is a good example. So let's say you're double charging this. Oh my God. Unfreeze. Stop. All right, so let's say you're double charging here. Do, 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 do. And let's say you expect to blow the fuck out of this unit, right? So you gotta think to yourself, what am I gonna do if I win? What am I gonna do if I lose, right? So there's a reason to go like this. Let's say you're gonna kill the whole unit. Well, if you're like this, then good for you is you have a pretty free range to pivot um, completely and not be within one inch of each other. But sometimes what happens is the unit isn't this wide, and maybe it's it's an elder, two elders versus a chariot, right? Probably a better example is two elders versus a chariot. And you say, oh, I'm going to kill this chariot, and I want to reform afterwards. You could go wide, and you could say, okay. But what, what are you in a bad position here? Because now he can't go, he can go like this, to be just out of an inch because you basically if you go here you're two inches away from each other if you go max to the side right and I guess you essentially gain an inch going this way so you're just maybe you're in technically anyway but what you could have done is if I don't even know how this would work if you would ever want to do this it's not Let's put a beam prints in. It's a better example with a beam prints. Like, if you were just out of an inch here, right? This is a better example. Way better example. And like I said, it's so case specific, but it's things to look at. And there's no, like, rule to it. You just have to look at what spacing options you have. Because there's layers of this, right? There's maximizing enemy models. There's do you kill the model. There's what, you know... There's all these little things. So here's an example of where you're out of an inch, right? You, you just charge willy nilly and you're like, I'm going to go here. And then you end up killing the cherry and you're like, oh, I can, I don't end up wanting to overrun. I want to combat reform. Well, this guy, he's just out of an inch. So he can't even go like this. He has to go 90 degrees to keep the inch. And this guy can't do shit because, 
right? He can only go 90. He can go, like, here, probably. If you had just put this within an inch to start, right? Just, I shouldn't have used the guy without the wind. If you put him just within an inch to start, just like that, right? Well, now when you combat reform, you have all the options in the world. You can, this guy's already in an inch. He can go, he can stay within an inch. He could go here, he could go here. He could, this guy could go like that, and then you're still within an inch, so this guy can now go like that. I mean, that's huge, right? Just look at the, the, the reform I just did. Well, let's just say, okay, let's do a good example. Let's say this, this is an enemy unit, right? Right here. If you're not, with, and let's say the, this is an ongoing fight. If you start within an inch of each other, if you don't start within an inch of each other, better example, right? What can you do? This guy can turn. He can't turn his angle like that. He has to go like this. And then this guy can't actually go anywhere within this range. So he, this is the best he can do. Uh, for shits, let's put this unit here. And he has sight. So let's say that. That's the best he can do. He can't see this unit ever. Because he can't get out of the one inch of this guy. So only this guy can go by himself. And let's say he's not good enough to go by himself. If you would have just put yourself within an inch to start, right? Just, just here. Just there. Just within that inch. You could easily go like this. And then this guy can, nope. This guy can go like that. And boom. You got yourself a front and a flank. Could be the difference between breaking that unit and not breaking that unit. That, and these are little things you need to think about because you don't want to... When things go into combat, there's a lot of like finicky things that can happen. Right? Like things get shifted and stuff. So you don't. what you don't want is by the time the enemy moved out of combat to have to debate whether you were, th we were within an inch of your own unit or not. These are active things to think about. And when you charge in to say, hey, I'm within an inch of my own unit. Because it can come back to bite you in the ass if you're not. So this that was a per this is a perfect example of like planning ahead. Um, and just, as you can see, just how big a deal it is to be within an inch of each other. So sometimes being slightly within an inch of each other is actually way better on... Um, when you charge it now maybe sometimes willy-nilly people say oh i'm gonna go in they put it just randomly they're like i'm gonna blow up this guy on the charge anyway and i guess you technically could have been like super wide and it would have done the same thing right you kind of have the same freedom here um where you could go like this like like i said it's not always going to be perfect and you could have done the same thing if you go wide. But as I said, these are very, I'm showing you very specific examples. And we don't know how this, all this gets in there. It's, it's a case by case basis. But sometimes being within an inch of your own unit is, is a extremely big. And so I think that's, that's something when people charge things to really think about of what happens if I get to reform? What happens if I kill the unit? Sometimes I put myself in and realize I'm not in the position I want to be because either the unit held or the unit didn't hold or like, I guess one of the bigger examples was I charge, sorry, I charged something and I put my models in and I didn't actually think about what if I killed the thing on the charge? I think it was involving going through a woods. Like it was like a big ass model, like a maw. See if I can get a big ass model out. It happens a lot on big ass single models, right? I think I was charging like this, and I had like a double charge where with a chariot and something else. Let's just say this, right? And I and I clipped here, and I thought to myself, oh, if. When he holds, I'll just combat, you know, I didn't want to go through the woods because I didn't want to take DTs. Oh, I'll just combat reform down here. 
because I want to be like towards his army the next turn. Well, what happened was the guy just he just fucking died on the charge, and then like I think it was like this maybe, and I was like, oh shit, this is not where I want to be facing each other. So just things like that where it's like maybe I should have taken the risk of going through the woods to avoid if I did kill him where I would be afterwards. So um, yeah, I think of all this, there were so many little things of just knowing how combat reform worked and knowing how like charges work like here, for example, with the whole blocking the thing behind it, it it's a big it's a big skill set and it's not really abusing the rules none of these rules are that abusive like they're just the rules right you can't get around that and people are going to use them against you and it's really about creating that macro situ the little micro situations because you know like i said i've watched a lot of games and you know what the biggest commentary i have when i when i think of players and skill differences, it's it's not like, listen, there's bad players out there who give you a million charges and who roll two dice at tens to cast when they have four. You know what I mean? Like they roll different dice. They shouldn't. Or they stop the wrong spells. But a lot of people out there, they know the averages. And I, I hate using the word averages. But they know the kind of like the averages and what they should do. They're not like dumb. They're not. They're like, I need to roll four dice at this ten to cast or whatever. And they can do the basics. And what I say a lot is, they don't impress me. They don't like they're the type of guy they're like they're a solid player, they're going to shoot at the right targets, they're going to, you know, point their magic the right way, they're not going to give you the flank charge here, but they're also not going to like do anything special. They're not going to charge you with a chariot and then, you know, they're not going to charge a unit with a chariot and then clip in the flank with a fucking, I don't know, fast cav unit so that you know, I don't know. Let's just do a cool example. Just because I can. I don't know how often it's going to happen, but... Is this going to work? Let's do this. Just for shits. Whatever. This probably isn't even that good of a play if you look at the models I'm using. They're not this type of person that's, you know, is going to get in this situation and say, oh, I'm going to charge here, and I'm going to charge here, and I'm going to charge the fast cab here, so that when this breaks, because it's some shitty unit, that this gets the turn and hits this in the flank, and because, and you know, and because it gets to charge here, it gets to hit here, and then this fight happens and you know because this unit pinned it so it gets the fight in this turn and so for some reason this guy dies and this chariot gets over in here right that that's not even that elaborate it's not that hard to see but there's just some players that don't do that shit like you're not worried about them doing that to you they're just gonna do i don't know they're gonna think of some basic ass shit but that's the kind of shit that can happen and like cascade a game um completely so the more opportunities you see, right? That's why when I watch uh, Thomas play a lot, he doesn't, they don't make moves that are so crazy that you're like, I've never seen that before. It's so, I never would have thought of that. It's just like after they do it, you're like, wow, I didn't think of that. Did I just say the opposite of what I said? Not that you couldn't think of it. You just wouldn't think of it. It's almost like, it's almost like if somebody told you the little tactic and so, what to look for, you could find it. But you're not sure what to look for. That's the one, right? This whole like shit with like charging in the chariot and then turning the flank so somebody can't see. If you're not used to looking for that, then you almost never do it. I think one of the ones people learn very early is when they catch themselves. And this is the one that took me a, a, a little bit to get used to checking. It's not crazy, right? The difference between... This, right, this, and three degrees, one more degree, four degrees, right? The difference between 11 degrees here and, you know, nine degrees 
is that if there was a unit here, right? And I didn't want to charge the warriors in with it. At, at nine degrees, I could charge it because I can get past my own unit. At 11 degrees, I can't charge it because I can't get past my own unit. And my one wheel, he's not over here. That's, that's a huge difference. That happens a lot. Especially with newer players, they block themselves a lot. But if you don't, it's not crazy, right? That's pretty simple. I just don't block your shit. Make sure you can go in a straight line. That, but those two degrees and making sure you check it. I swear what I want people to do is to check it. Don't leave it to chance that your opponent can screw you on something. Tell them what you're doing, right? There's times where I tell them, I'm like, hey, you know, my elder will just miss my unit, right? I'll say, I'll be like, oh, look, he can get past it. Because what you don't want is some stupid thing happen on, in person too. Person is probably more so because UB is, is pretty clear with like this access shit. UB almost makes you more precise in some ways. But what you don't want in person is like they nudge your model or you nudge your model and like they're like, oh, no, you hit yourself. And you can be like, no, I told you last turn I don't hit myself and be very exact. So um, get in the habit of checking those things, making sure you can get past yourselves, making sure they can't reform in such a way that, you know, your unit can't see. Um, happens a lot with like overruns and reforms like, right? If I'll do one more example, I keep finding ones, but it's all like combat reforms and stuff, right? So a big one would be this unit is coming in here, right? And let's say you're facing like this. Well, what's the problem with this? I think this is a little too much, but if this kills this unit, it could reform like this. Oh, I got to do a little more like that. Okay, right. So you think to yourself, oh, I can see him. It's okay. And then he kills this unit and he goes like this. And you're like, oh, fuck, that's not good. Right? And all it took was making sure that you can see his center. Right? Right here. So that he can't get out of it. Now he could always overrun out of it. But that's different. Now he could, does he have the option to go like this? And you might have to think to yourself, does it matter if he, no, he can't. And you might have to say to yourself, does it matter if he could do it? There's a lot of little things where it's like, you have to think of the situation, but just think of all the options. Because when it comes to this, his options are he can overrun, he might get stuck here, he might just be here, he might just pivot, he might get to reform like this. And you have to say, does this guy cover all the bases that I'm worried about? Because if he just catches you on one, especially with like combats, like it could just cascade, right? The difference between like him being able to kill this unit, say he wipes this unit, and let's just, I don't know, and you needed this guy to counter. Like most people would go like this, right? This would just be the simple way to do it. Just say, fuck it. You know, you have to overrun like 10 inches to get out of my sight. But, I don't know. Sometimes it's a matter of a sliver of an inch where like they just get out of line of sight. And it just, you're just like, oh, fuck me. It just screws you. So check every little thing because those that up. Those that up and can be the difference between you countering this guy and this guy getting a free walk into the back line potentially. Oh, all right. That's it for this video. Thanks for listening.